Okay, we have here today a pretty interesting looking integral from the Columbia integration, B2022. This one was problem 15. We have the integral of one over x cubed, square root of x squared plus one dx. Okay, I actually thought this was one of the hardest ones on this integration B and pretty interesting. I wasn't able to come up with anything really creative. I kind of just did the straightforward thing, which was a trig substitution. So to get started with this, what I want to do is for my trig substitution, I'm going to make my sub, because we have x squared plus one here, I'm going to set my x equal to tan of t. We'll take a derivative. So our dx value is just going to become secant squared t dt. Then we'll just plug in values over here. So our numerator is going to become our dx value, which is secant squared t dt. Here we're going to have tan cubed. And then inside the square root, we're going to end up with tan squared t plus one. Well, we can use an identity on this. Tan squared t plus one is the same thing as secant squared t, but it's inside the square root. So what we can do is take this and cancel with one of our secants, and we're gonna end up with the numerator of secant t dt, and then this is gonna become just tan cubed t. And at this point, it's kind of too bad I don't still have a secant squared t in the numerator because I could do another substitution, but that's not going to work here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this in terms of sines and cosines. So my secant t, I'm just going to write as 1 over cosine t. For tan cubed t, I'll have sine cubed. We'll have sine cubed t in the denominator, and then I'll bring a cosine cubed t into the numerator. But I can cancel this with one of these, leaving me with cosine squared here. Then what I'll do is when I rewrite this for cosine squared t, I can write this as one minus sine squared t over sine cubed t. But then I can just split this up into two integrals. So the first one's gonna be one over sine cubed t, which I'll write as cosine cubed t. And the second integral is just gonna become cosecant of t. Now for this one, this is a really common integral. I'm just gonna use the formula for this. So what I'll do is we'll write this as natural log absolute value cosecant t minus cotangent t. Okay, now from here, what I need to do, I need to just figure out the integral of cosine cubed t. Now we could use a formula for that as well, but I don't actually remember that formula very much, so I'm gonna use integration by parts on this. And we'll use the DI method, or tabular integration. We'll split up this cosine cubed t into two parts. I'll have my, my first part's gonna be cosecant t to differentiate, and then the second part to integrate is gonna be cosecant squared t. Sorry, I don't know if I keep saying cosine here. This is cosecant. I just want to be clear that this is cosecant and this here is cosecant as well. For some reason, my brain wants to say cosine. I don't know why. Okay, we'll have alternating signs here. When we differentiate cosecant, this is going to give me minus cosecant t cotangent t. And then here, integrating cosecant squared t is just going to be minus cotangent t. So then we have part of our solution here on the diagonal, just this minus cosecant t times cotangent t. And then here, minus and minus is gonna cancel, but we have another minus, so this is gonna be, and of course this is an integral here. So when I write this, we'll have our minus out front, we'll have a cosecant t, and then this is gonna become cotangent squared. But now what I can do is on this, we'll use another identity. For this, I can write this as cosecant squared t minus one, and then we'll distribute this in here. Now let me clean this up a little bit so it's not too confusing. This cosecant cubed that we're trying to find, I'm going to label this one i, so we can just keep track of everything. So we're going to have i equals this, which is minus cosecant t cotangent t. Then we're going to have minus, then we distribute in cosecant to cosecant squared. This is going to give me the integral of cosecant cubed t. Here we're distributing a cosecant to a minus 1, but we have a minus in front. Minus and minus cancels to give me a plus, and we're differentiating cosecant t dt here. But now this here is actually just another copy of our original integral, so I can call this i. That's nice. And we already found this, because this is what we did before. This is this thing right here. So what I'm gonna do, we just wanna solve for our i, so I'm gonna add an i on both sides here. Okay, so this is gonna cancel here, because we have minus i plus i, so those go away. And then here on the left side, we're gonna have two i. But I'm just gonna clean up the board so I can get some more space. Now from here, again, we're just trying to find our value for i, which is this integral of cosecant cubed, and we have our i here. And so all I need to do for that is let's just divide by two on both sides. That's gonna cancel here, and then we're gonna have divide by two over here. So this will give me my value for i, but we still have this other natural log. When we rewrite this, we're gonna have this. 
I'm gonna pull the two in front, so we're gonna have minus one half cosecant t. And then here, let's combine this and this, because this here, we can look at this here as one half of this natural log, and this is minus one. So we're just looking at one half minus one. So I can write this as minus one half of this natural log cosecant t minus cotangent t. And now we're in good shape here. We've done all our integrating. The only problem we have is we have everything in terms of t and we wanna get back to x. So what I can do for that is let me just draw my triangle and see if I can squeeze it in over here. So all we know is we know tan of t is x and I can write x as x over one. So if we draw a triangle with our angle t and tan of t is x over one or opposite over adjacent, I can write it like this. Then using Pythagorean theorem, let's find the third side and that's just gonna be x squared plus one. And you'll notice all we really need is we need cosecant of t and cotangent of t. Cosecant t, cotangent of t. So for cotangent of t, that's just gonna be the reciprocal of this. We really didn't need a triangle for that, right? Because for cotangent of t, it's just adjacent over hypotenuse or one over x. And then cosecant over t is gonna be hypotenuse over opposite. So it's gonna be square root of x squared plus one over x. And so now we have all the values we need right here in order to finish this thing off. So let's just start plugging in. So we're gonna have minus one half, cosecant times cotangent, that's this times this, it's gonna be square root of x squared plus one over multiplying the denominators, it's gonna give me x squared, minus one half, natural log. Now for these, we have the same denominator, they're both x, so I can write it all over x. And then we're gonna have just the square root of x squared plus one minus just a one, We'll put an absolute value around that, plus C, and that's it. Okay, I thought it was a pretty good problem. It was a little bit of a grind doing the trick substitution. Let me know if you had some better ways. I wonder if there's maybe a creative solution that I wasn't seeing, and maybe you had a quicker way to do this. So we'll stop it there. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a great day.